Charles Turin or anything. Um, hello. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah there, there we go. Hi, and welcome back to Cairncast. I'm Robbie, I'm with Harris here, um, and we are in a new location. Um, that's that. So, uh, <laughs> we're we continuing. Are. Yeah, we are. Yeah, continuing. we are. Yeah, well, yeah, we're, I don't know, do you want to do that again? Yeah, nah. We've, we've never done that before, ever. We've had to restart. Oh, hi, and welcome to Cairncast, episode seven. Um, <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Can we do that? Yeah. Because if I like the introduction, it's quite Chris. special. Right. Nah. Um, we're going to talk about something quite interesting this week. Very interesting. Yeah. So we're going to get straight into it, which is subscriptions. Why are we talking about subscriptions? Very good question. Glad you asked. Mm. Not rehearsed at all. We're talking about subscriptions because last night, we're recording this on Friday, the 16th of March, uh, Dragon's Den went out. 17th, 17th of, March. of March. It was on the 16th it went out though, so haha. Ha. Um, Dragon's Den uh, was... I guess you could briefly outline what is our curated subscription as we call it on the website. Yeah, so we've kept, we've tried to keep it as simple as possible. Mm. Um, the whole idea was uh, we work with a lot of different coffees on a daily basis and we thought it was an opportunity to curate an experience for a subscriber um, so they can try a snapshot of our coffees throughout a p- period. So you only get one coffee. If you if you order every week, you'll get that same coffee for the full month because it's the one we want to kind of highlight. And I guess, given that it is a side hustle, it's an aspect of our, our business, it's not the, the entirety of what we focus on, we're like, you kind of need to let these guys... You know, do the complex stuff. You know, it, yeah. you know it's not something that we can dedicate 100 percent of our time to the, the the coffee subscription. So we've kept it dead simple, and and I think, um, yeah, like that's basically it. it's curated subscription. We do also allow people to order the guilty pleasure on a subscription basis because it's the only other coffee which isn't seasonal. Yeah, it, I mean, it is seasonal, but it is. A format which is always for sale. So, our the guilty pleasure subscription, for example, you, it suits very much someone who has a sage barista at home and they want an espresso. They have an espresso or they make their own flat white every morning. Um, yeah. And then, obviously, the curated subscription, they can chuck that on their sage machine. But sometimes it might taste good. Sometimes it might taste a little bit what they weren't expecting, probably out of a coffee. Yeah. Because so. um, some of we've we've done some fairly special curated subscription coffees out there. So the the idea, I guess, is that in return for your loyalty as a subscriber, yeah. you're always getting a coffee which is more expensive than you're paying for it. Yeah. So it's thir- currently, I mean, it <laughs> it needs to go up because <laughs> it hasn't moved since the the coffee crisis of 2022 and everything went yeah, up the in roof. price and obviously cost of living. But it's currently £13, including delivery, which, to be transparent, costs us 350 Yeah. First, second class. Yeah. Um, so we're basically selling the coffee for nine fifty then, in that yeah. instance. And yeah, we don't. And you can look on our website. That we there's now no longer a coffee that no. would cost that probably. So that's I guess the the exchange is you know buy from us on a regular basis, um, allow us to be able to future proof our buying and know that okay we've got this many subscribers that we can buy for then yeah. you know, in return you get it a bit cheaper but like our subscription's not big in the slightest I don't know how transparent yeah people like us being transparent about this oh 100% I'm like we've got I think we've got quite a lot of subscribers I would say that's like it's 55 I think at the moment maybe but I, I don't know like I would imagine some people on there th- would expect it to be far more than that yeah yeah probably but we're a small business but I, I in a think big room um You'd look at a lot of subscriber... We're not a subscriber model. Like, it's a side part to our business. And I think other ones, yeah, your Origins, your Caravans, they maybe have big, big subscriber bases. I doubt it. How many do you reckon? I don't think... Like, more than 2,000. So, Packed Coffee, for example, I think they're full subscriber bases, aren't they? They're probably 50,000. I I think they said 10. But either way, I think it's unlikely... How many people in the UK subscribe to a monthly coffee subscription? I don't know. Not if but it's a hundred thousand, I will be my mind will be blown. Yeah, I, 
Yeah, I can understand that, but yeah. <laughs> not, not not for any reason. But, but it like, so the sixty but million people has been there. like apparently yeah. basically kicked. They were here before Pact. They do a coffee of the month video basically every week, yeah. and it's like their that coffee goes out to all the subscribers. They, I'm always amazed, not not because it's bad, but like people like middle aged men, like a guy who's a family member of ours. How about middle aged man? He yeah. has he has a. It has been subscription. He's had it for years, and I was like, "Oh shit!" It's quite, it's quite surprising yeah. the people you don't realize because it at the end day is massively convenient. But yeah, it's very, very convenient. I do it's get something that. you will always buy. So I've uh, a thing in my head: Are we at subscripturation where it's like you've got too many <laughs> subscriptions? I think probably. So uh, you know, like they said on Dragon's Den. So that was why Peter Jones was out because he was like. Yeah, I think subscriptions. People got too many subscriptions, and you've you're a Mister Subscription. I'm like, I yeah. remember you talking me through. You had to cancel some of your. Yeah. You could run us through your subscriptions. I've only got one remaining, and I need to cancel it. <laughs> uh, I can't say okay, beer fifty two. <laughs> I can't afford. I can't afford it. I love it. I love it yeah, dearly. I've had it for years, but yeah. um, subscriptions. I I get what they're saying. Is like the first thing you cancel when you're feeling the pinch is subscriptions that yeah and yeah the 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 classic like um mechanics of a good subscription is it always arrives when you need it yeah and doesn't arrive when you've still got some of it left because that's when you're like oh, i've got too much i'm going to cancel it do you know what works the best for that what who gives what? a crap toilet ro- toilet paper oh, yeah. so good i thought you were going to say just buying it when you need it <laughs> no no it's <laughs> no, no, a shop and buy cat and i are so bad for that like uh we run out of everything all the time yeah. so you know you think about uh, like Harry's razors, for example, really like I'll literally be chopping my face apart with a razor, and then you, you know if, he still if, uses a razor. I just, if what Phillips one blade, I've never replaced it. I've had a year. <laughs> I love a good razor. I love a good shave. Um, but I think uh, getting stuff like that delivered, yeah, it yeah, it, it does definitely work. Toilet paper works very very well because mm. you tend to use the same amount. Is there <laughs> anything else in coffee? which you need a lot that we can make into a subscription model. I'm thinking filter paper subscription. Yeah, but you obviously get a bundle of 100 <laughs> subscriptions. Silver 100 <laughs> filter papers, don't you? Yeah, they'll run out eventually. <laughs> it's, so like every every uh, nine months you get... Yeah, you get another one. Two so maybe pound, that's... Two pound box of filters. I'm just making our subscription even less profitable by saying we should probably just sling some free filters in every so Yeah, probably. Um, but I think the interesting point with all of this is for someone to subscribe to your offering is loyal. Like, that is our most loyal customers, would be someone who every month is like, oh, I'm going to spend my 13 quid every month. Um, and it's, it's a weird one, because, again, we should probably do more on that, because those are, those 50 people are Cairn Gorham's most loyal customers. How mind-blowing would it be to have all of them in a room? Oh, that'd be great. Like right now. In here. It'd be, quite, it'd be fascinating to see in this demographic, this wouldn't this it? This weird big room that we're yeah. in. Yeah. Would be. Maybe that's what we should do one day. I think Maybe that's be why we're here. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, bring him in. Bring him in. Uh, <laughs> Robbie. Uh, basically setting, laying the groundwork for him to do some sort of live band performance for you there. That'd be great. <laughs> it's like, well, oh, guys, while you're here. Listen to the song I wrote. <laughs> About subscriptions. Yeah, I could there do you that. Um, you could do that with a jingle for this podcast. Um, so it, it is interesting. They are very loyal people. And I think the other thing with subscribing is quite a big decision. I know uh, we will get onto a funny, funny story in a minute. But obviously, you are committing to spend money regularly, although a lot of subscriptions now, obviously, you can cancel. Yes. When you want, and we have some pause and cancel. We have some laws about that because obviously, if you subscribe to our subscription, you get fifty percent off your first. You're going to open this up to. What? I wonder <laughs> well, like, how many people are going to do this after. <laughs> that is very very true. <laughs> no fuck it. Uh, Transparency. Yeah, again, don't, we'll ask you not to do it. There please don't do it. But yeah. So um, if you subscribe, you get your first order for six pound fifty. And then when that subscription reoccurs the next month or four weeks or whatever you select, it then goes up to £13. So it get doubles and doubles every month. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be very confusing. So it's £13 every month or every period after the first one. But 
some people obviously get their first subscription and then cancel straight away. Um, so they've obviously got their beans for six fifty, and then they just cancel, which is a bit of a dirty trick. What I've been meaning <laughs> to see is if there's like if people recur doing that, like the same people mm, using different email addresses. So that's or just another, the same. Could you another interesting. Same? Jack, we maybe chat about that. I, obviously, Jack with his own website. So it happens quite a lot of treating that uh, people will use multiple emails to get ten percent discount codes, yeah. and. But obviously, Shopify is very, very good at being like, well, not good enough that it stops it. But it's like, obviously, like, this is Dave Davidson. And <laughs> oh, and if you just search Dave Davidson, you'll see all, all of his orders with his different yeah. emails. So there's not a lot you can oh, do about that. I have actually noticed that happening with us as well. Yeah. Another interesting, I don't know if we talked about this before, is to get Wi-Fi in the cafe. In the cafes, obviously, you enter your email address to get the free Wi-Fi at the cafes. Um, and then, <laughs> so that is there any way of pulling them up now? Then no, uh, sure obviously knows. that gets you added. You take a box, and if you take the box, you obviously get added to our mailing list. Mailing list. Obviously, you can not tick and not get added to the mailing list, but some people tick. Uh, what happens quite a lot is that people will put in. I'm trying to think of some of the funniest ones we have of people just putting in like Snoop Dogg at Stone dot com. Yeah, yeah, just putting in ram random. Email addresses. Oh, so absolute crackers. Aren't they? Um, there is. We should maybe get through a list of those. In do that for next is, week. It is very. Yeah, there's a lot. But again, as a small business owner, so if they've subscribed to your email newsletter, I don't know, Jack. You'll correct me if I'm wrong with this. If there's three or four hundred of those people and they are in our newsletter subscribers list, we pay to send them emails yeah. on a weekly or every twice a week basis. Yeah, what was it like fifteen pounds every time you put a mailing list out? Yeah, but that'll be for the toll. Yeah, which is so yeah, just little interesting things like that. Whereas a small business owner, you're like you. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the the coffee the subscription one, I think is is one of the more painful ones because obviously we're paying the three pounds fifty for the shipping. So in reality, someone's getting their beans for three pounds. They're also curated beans. Like those are the best beans um, we think you know that month. It's a really really good coffee. Yeah. We've spent time to cup that coffee. We've sourced that coffee. We've worked with an importer. That coffee's then been roasted, and someone thinks it's acceptable to get it for three pounds. I that's a bit of a rant, and obviously no, it's, it's quite it's. It's hard not to take that to heart, almost. Yeah. Because, like, it's such a faceless crime. <laughs> like, it's so easy for them to do it. It's like, they won't even think twice about it because it's become the norm yeah. to do that. To like, like, I will try anything I possibly can to get a Domino's pizza for cheaper. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. I'll be literally trolling hot uh, jar, all this are whatever you, it's called. Do you have a Deliveroo subscription? No. So you Someone don't had, you don't I, pay the twenty pounds a month or whatever to get. I don't pay it, but I end up I should be because it'd be way cheaper. Do you? Exactly. We should yeah. we should set up delivery. So I could extort all these drivers. Yeah, it's literally <laughs> one of the world's best businesses. <laughs> yeah. Um, Unbelievable. yeah, I I did think you had a delivery subscription, but oh, maybe I do. It's maybe coming up on the business account. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't. I think um, no. Nah, oh, that's another one. To be it's fair. another uh, like. If I do that, I'll just balloon. <laughs> like, at least there's a slight bit of guilt about paying the three pounds delivery, or whatever. At the moment, yeah. yeah if yeah. I re- remove that, I'll literally be. So, so Robbie is very guilty on the same with the yeah the company account. So Squarespace, which I don't know how long you've not been using Squarespace for. Yeah, maybe like two and a half years. <laughs> Still comes out every month. It's not anymore. It's, it's cancelled now. <laughs> ah, and it's like Squarespace owe me about three grand. <laughs> they do. They owe you a lot of money. But that's the thing. Once you're in on a subscription, you're in. Yeah. You're hooked. I'll go on and get fifty percent off for a free month. Free Just month. Keep on making new websites. Yeah. They, I'll really show them, won't it? That, that, I'll show them. That would show them. Uh, and then uploading huge videos just to yeah. tee up their server space. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> They'll rue the day that I forgot to cancel that subscription. <laughs> yeah. So, God, we've gone so tangenty. Are there. we crisp break yet? Uh, I don't actually know. I would, I'm keen for crisps. Like I'm hungry. What time is it? Have we gone on for? No, I don't think. Few, no, 
Have we done half an hour yet? Right, well... No, no one's speaking to So me. Jack's... None of the production team are... Chatting yeah, about. Jack's um, oh, providing the crisps this week. He didn't... One of the crisps that's been provided is vegan. We'll probably lose... So do I eat these and you eat them? Yeah, you can eat those. We'll probably lose 40 subscribers because I'm vegan now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... Uh, oh, they are vegetarian though. Is that the same thing? It's got V. Why do they not call vegan like vegan? So it's not confusing <laughs> with the double V's. Like, it must be hard. After a few drinks, you must get confused. So very confusing. Cat is a lot better at this than me, but obviously, I forget all. Don't forget all the time. I do forget sometimes because obviously it's milk, really. It's, uh, uh, um, milk powder. If you're um, oh, made in Dublin, like I think this might be the first crisp break where I don't give basically a ten out of ten. I don't mind these crisps at all because you're raging about me. And these, but they're not as good. So these are balsamic. These are like Walker sensations. So balsamic. Those vinegar are like one of the most OG crisps ever. Do you remember, like the white bags we used to get, and there's actually like a picture of a thing of vinegar and a red onion on it. Nope. Remember the white bag? There were sensations were white bags. Don't the remember. The chicken in time. <laughs> oh my days. I do remember the do chicken in time ones. Yeah. I don't remember the white bags though. They were white bags and like the red chili had like oh So red chili used to be my favorite. Jack will put a picture up here. <laughs> were they white bags? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, sweet uh, sensations red chili used to be my favorite crisp, but they I would say there are a lot of people's favorite crisps. They contain milk. Do they? Mm. Oh, how are they? Honestly, I'm going to stop burning my home. So these are not as good as the co-op ones, I would say. But the co-op ones are not balsamic vinegar. So these are balsamic and caramelized onion. The co-op ones are like Chardonnay vinegar or something like that. Chardonnay. These are really good. They kind of... Of course they are. They taste a bit kind of red lustery. Six cows died trying to make them. <laughs> Have you been watching Clarkson's Farm? No. <laughs> it's no. pretty savage when you right the end. Oh, have you watched to the end? Mm-hmm. Spoiler. They just when he has to potentially kill that his favourite cow. Yeah, and they don't. And then he's like, we're, we're getting a pet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great clanger. It was quite good, that, actually. Um, but then, obviously, you look at his restaurant and in, like, He's like, nothing here is vegan or something. It's like the neon sign in the back of his restaurant. So, um, The sign that's usually like, this, this is the place. Or, mm, or exactly. live life. I He's actually like, nothing's vegan. quite like Clarkson's Farm. Um, I think, again, Jack, Jack will absolutely hate Jeremy Clarkson, I imagine. Oh, <laughs> it's so hard to keep up with what's good and what's bad. Yeah, I know. We, we, who do, yeah. Yeah. who do I not like? No, we can't say. Or like... We'll be cancelled, yeah, for saying uh, Carol Vorderman. Oh. Vanilla. Yeah. Maybe she said something bad once, though. He's apparently... Yeah, well, I don't know. Is, apparently is he, he, do we like him or do we not like him? What? <laughs> what did he do? I didn't hear that. Nice. For God's sake. Oh, that bit actually has to be cut from this podcast. It's the first bit ever. I'm not going to jail. Um, I'm not fighting that legal battle. No, let's just change the subject. Yeah, quickly. Oh, what I was going to say is on the crisp front. Mm. Oh yeah. Obviously, our inspiration, Ross Krispy Creed. Yeah. One of our baristas uh, was in HuffPost today talking about Irish coffee, which is kind of cool. He's from Dublin, same as these crisps. So uh, shout out to Krispy Creed. Creed. So, how many creeds are you giving your? Oh, I should probably say the re- reason I'm talking about him is he likes he does reviews of crisps. Yeah, we copied it from from Ross, Almost, yeah. so he'll be on here one day doing it himself. Um, how many crispy creeds am I giving it? Well, yeah. have another test. Uh, I generally really like them. I think kettle chips are pretty elite. Yeah, sharer bags, Very aren't elite. they? Yeah, you're an elite kind of guy, though. Isn't it? Seven and a half, because. It's not my favorite flavor, but those are quite good. Like, I wouldn't usually like cheese and onion that much, even though I love cheese. I'm more of an American cheese, cheese, crisp kind of guy. 
like nacho cheese crisp. Nacho cheese. No? Hate it. Hate it. You know, like, in America, you can get like quadruple cheese crisps, and they're like five different cheeses in it. <laughs> or four. Probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Oh dear. Um, I would say I like those, but it's I wouldn't buy them. So probably a six, maybe. <laughs> so salty. Uh, they were very salty. Yes, uh, a six, six out of ten crisps. Yeah. Um, hopefully so, next week we get back to some good crisps. <laughs> Thank you, Jack, for buying them. Uh, or still he didn't them buy them. He took them off from your parents. Yeah. He took, yeah. Oh yeah. no! Yeah, they're ready. Oh no! You can take them back. <laughs> I need to give your mum back that plastic spoon as well. Ah, uh, fork. Yeah. Um, so back to subscriptions. Um, I think again, we we are positive people. We don't want to be negative at all. No. So, but you, what you're basically saying is that it's all right to lie on TV. If it improves your business, basically. <laughs> uh, no, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, I'm saying they got caught up in the hustle, maybe. Mm. But I don't know. I I want to really sit on the fence on this one because I can see, see how every I, point of view. I completely agree. And it's more fun to watch it unfold. Yeah. What I was thinking about on subscriptions is I can see why it could be an appreciating market, but also potentially declining because like post COVID, everybody wanted to engage more with brands, didn't they? Yeah. So we talked a lot about like experiential retail yeah. and I can kind of see why like people would want to just go into a shop, into their local specialty coffee shop and mm. buy coffee. Um, so I guess the subscriptions to me that would be successful are probably the ones that are more um, are actually giving you uh, an added value, like bringing you coffee from America or coffee from Scandinavia that you you don't yeah. have on your doorstep. Yeah, if yeah. you're literally like just getting coffees from UK, it's probably I can see why people would want to go into shops to engage with them more. Yeah, but having said that, I do think that it is the convenience element is also something that's so prevalent right yeah. now. And you talk about the who who. Gives a crap. Or yeah. Like, I completely understand why something as mundane as that, it's great to have it just coming through. And mm. I feel like to 99% of people, coffee is quite a mundane thing they need every 80% morning. 80% of coffee sold in the UK is still instant, I think. We That's mind-blowing. Yeah. So we should set up an instant coffee uh, subscription. Yeah, we should. Um, but good. Yeah. No, I, I get what you're saying. I very much agree with that, I think. It's... Uh, it's just an interesting model. And I think it's one which we obviously, we're not going to build a business around subscriptions. It's never going to be, yeah, you're not going to close all the cafes and start just doing a subscription-only model. I think you uh, part of what we like as well is having multiple strings to the bow. I think experiential is massive. So, for example, our coffee of the month, what we're trying to get to at a point is that Melville, for example, the Melville Place coffee shop, it's always on there during that month so you can taste it and you'll be like oh go buy a box we find and that's a very interesting stat as well we sell much more coffee much more retail coffee in the shops of the coffees that people are drinking in the shop so obviously you have your flat white and say it's poppy ann uh, which is what i think we've got a couple of times over the last month or so on single origin people buy more poppy ann because they're like i tasted that and i liked it yeah um and that's probably the the slight issue you're always going to have do with subscriptions. Well if I was in a coffee shop, yeah, for I sure. Mean, if I liked it, I'd but that's like, yeah. what I was saying. There's this problem with subscriptions is someone else is obviously making that choice. What those guys in Dragon's Den were saying last night is it's heavily curated to you based on mm. the flavor profiles you like. But at the end of the day, what happens if you get a box and you're like, don't like it? Yeah. What do you but, do? Chuck those beans in the bin. Yeah, I guess that's the risk. Uh, this has been one massive dis podcast about our own subscription <laughs> but i guess that's where they think they're adding the value by being like okay i like chocolatey coffees but as zara davies said she said, i don't really know what i like yeah but surely everybody knows if they like kind of chocolatey coffees or if they like fruity coffees i we, we chatted about this when i originally joined i'm like they don't and as far as I, I would say a large large percentage of the population is concerned coffee is coffee yeah so what there is is like a real lexicon 
mm. communication issue. We've in talked coffee. about that before, though. Yeah, like people need to know to say I don't like natural coffee. Yes, because that's quite a big, like, uh, what's the word? Um, what is the word? Polarizing. Polarizing like, uh, type type of taste. Yeah, but they don't know how to say that. So they're just like, I don't like fruity coffee. What? Well, which again, you know, so you get that through your letterbox. You pile it in your Sage Barista Pro, and you make yourself a flat white. You might be like, this is nothing yeah. like what I want it in the morning. Um, which I do. I find that quite interesting. And we've chatted about it before. The transparency around tasting notes, all that kind of stuff. You know, it's a bit subjective to a certain extent, but we are trying with the colours we use, as we've talked about before, to make it a little bit more clear to customers what they are getting. Yeah. We've talked about as well potentially launching, and maybe we can get comments on that, launching subscriptions based on the colours. So you could subscribe. Yeah. But that would be basically what yeah, they're doing. It would be. Like Tailored. Chocolatey, juicy. We'd be the only food. ones in the UK doing it then. <laughs> We need to get on Dragon's Den. Comment if you want us to get on Dragon's well, Den. I don't want to go on Dragon's Den. It looks uh, awful. I, I was hoping you would go. Oh, <laughs> I don't want to go. We like the sweatiest pound. You and Jack ever. can go on Dragon's Den. Yeah. And then you can call me in for the finance expert. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be like, year one, we made <laughs> three pounds. Yeah. And a net loss yeah. of 50 grand. You can tell them about all your subscriptions. Yeah. Like, I am the master subscriber. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've kept Squarespace in business. Like I'm basically Silicon yeah. Valley's best mate at this point. Um, but again, it's it's funny that that um, software as a service is a subscription model. So like SaaS software. So like Shopify is a subscription. Canva, yeah. Invanto. I don't know how many subscriptions you two sign us up to, but we're like, <sighs> we've got like every subscription under the sun. I would be surprised if it wasn't hundred. But <laughs> what? Like it's so much harder to cut those out. Because you're not getting regular value. Yeah, because so you're like, oh, maybe I'll, need it. I'll use that once. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But then, like, literally, I signed up to. Um, <laughs> it was like a year uh, subscription that I accidentally clicked or something to get a su- signature. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I saw that renewing, and then renewed I after a year, and it was like 150 quid. I was like, for fuck. I actually got in touch with them to try and get that money oh, back because yeah. I was like, that's, that's a very classic one. A complete shafting. So Robbie signed up to a subscription so we could get cool, customizable email signatures. Obviously, you get that. <laughs> I knew you'd hate that. <laughs> yeah, I knew you'd hate that. So we get them. We've got our cool email signatures. The ones we use aren't those ones, though. I don't know. Those are on HubSpot and they're free. <sighs> it's like, yeah. Another one is like QR codes yeah. things. Anyway, don't there is, just don't get me. There is apps now out there which help you run through your subscriptions. Snoop. Yeah, that's yeah. it. To cut them. Is there a business version of that? Don't know. We 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 need it. Yeah. Right. Invanto, I see. BT everyone. Sports stung me yesterday. Actually, Did they? I need to cancel that. I've no idea. Because what. I cancelled it, and then it was like, oh, there is a game I really want to watch. So I'll just I'll go back for one month. You can pay like thirty quid for a month or something. They sting yeah. you on that one. Uh, anyway. Are subscriptions ruining the world? Well, so what I was, was going to say, the, the, the subscription, obviously, when you receive a box of coffee, you're like, it's a, it's a visual cue to be like, oh, I need to cancel that. But with like, <laughs> but with Invato, it's like, yeah, you're, yeah. Not, you're not getting anyone phoning you up being like, by the way, I'm starting, your, your, you're recurring tomorrow, do you need to get it cancelled? <sighs> That's when you know a, a website is really, really good, though, is you sign up for a free trial and say you've got your 30 days or whatever, and then before it goes on to being a paid subscription, they're like, you need to cancel this today or it's going to be a paid subscription. I hate a service where they basically trick you into spending money. I thought Amazon Prime was like that for a while, that sometimes at checkout, you would accidentally subscribe to Amazon Prime. I am an Amazon Prime member, but then Kat would also be an Amazon. I'm like, how are we both Amazon Prime? Obviously, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. But also, you get Amazon Prime free with like absolutely everything. Everything, now. everything, yeah. And I think I'm probably still paying for three different Amazon Prime accounts. <laughs> like, I don't get it. I don't, I'm now yeah. so deeply ingrained. I just don't know what is going on in my bank account anymore. Aaron is not my fan. No, I can imagine. Yeah. So, there, that's quite. Quite intense. Um, well, you're also a boomer banker, though, in that you, I take it, probably use Clydesdale. Uh, RBS, but I love speaking to someone. In fact, I've got my my checkup with them soon, <laughs> where they're like, "Now, do you need funeral uh, services added to your?" <laughs> I quite enjoy like old school banking, like speaking to them face to face. 
RBS. I'm like, we could do a podcast on how bad RBS are as a business. I've been with them. Do you know how they got me? This is quite interesting. £100 free when I was a student yeah. to sign up. And I remember yeah. the leaflet had a lobster on it. <laughs> and uh, you bought a lobster. Yeah, it was basically like, go and buy yourself a lobster dinner with this free £100. <sighs> so I signed up and I've never left. So I made the switch from RBS to Starling. Yeah, Starling's great. I think a lot of people will be Monzo, Starling. I've got Monzo too, actually. Just I'm 50% so switch of- everything from RBS into your Monzo account. And then on your Monzo, you'll see a, there'll be a page where it shows you all your subscriptions. <laughs> yeah. Like, whereas on RBS, it'll be like, we've reinvented our banking app and <laughs> now you can do all this really cool stuff. And yet ding, Barry ding, ding. in the office is still phoning you up once yeah. a year to be like, Robbie, uh, <laughs> Uh, your mortgage is coming up or we need uh, to renew that overdraft well, facility and you're I have not one I, I, I really yeah I, I, you I'll, need AI and a chatbot you shouldn't be speaking to a guy on a phone you should be speaking to a chatbot yeah, but, who automatically is just chatbotting you and you're like oh yeah that chatbot got it right sweet yeah human interaction no I had to yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, was like, oh, I had to put some cash into my account recently and it was like a an automatic like ATM thing yeah. and I was like I, I couldn't do it and I was like is there no like tellers kicking about anymore oh no there's not tellers kicking about <laughs> no should be there shouldn't be well no that sounds bad I think obviously some people do need them you shouldn't be one of those people <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't be yeah. uh, I got a check obviously my grandma uh, still sends me a Christmas check brilliant uh, so I got a check the other day I had to take a picture of it um which I found that a bit... That worked. It worked. It was a bit frustrating. Wow. I don't know why I found it... It was so easy. But That's it's more like... How easy is that to doctor, though? I don't know. Probably don't quite know. difficult. Yeah, probably. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> anyway, you need to get a new bank. Well, yeah. Yeah. But I've fallen out with Starling and Revolut because Starling... I can't remember why I fell out with them, but... They're too good. <laughs> no, like... They, they made not, everything too easy and efficient. They a business account and it took too long and they were wanted to know details about, like, my f- everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My life. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Revolut, I still can't get access to the business Revolut. I don't know why that's the case. <laughs> so, <laughs> basically, Matt, the wholesale manager, and Kate, the roaster manager, have basically got access to the account and I don't. Yeah. So, yeah. I was getting chased by... Um, Matt, and I was like, listen, Matt, I don't uh, have <laughs> access to the account. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, and she off Harris is here. Uh, that was such a huge tangent. But, again, I think subscriptions are very much symptomatic, symptomatic of the time we are alive in, of which RBS is, like, 100 years behind. <laughs> oh, subscriptions, when I think subscriptions, you think of modern-day banking, you think mm. of all the apps and stuff that you pay, your Spotify's. Um, your Netflix is all that kind of stuff. Why add coffee into the mix? Well, what's your? I, I think if we're wrapping up, why have a coffee subscription? Well, I would rebut that by saying think of some of the most timeless subscriptions, which have been around for a hundred years. Guys going around in milk floats, delivering milk every morning. Uh, guys going out in newspaper rounds, delivering newspaper every morning. Subscriptions of sorts. Yeah, hundred percent. Hey, listen, Jamie's going to be on a milk r- on a. Paper round, for There's sure. not a single successful newspaper in the UK anymore, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. But they still exist. Like now. Yeah, but that's only because... Not all, everyone's like a who robot. Who do you know of your age that has a newspaper subscription? As in a physical newspaper subscription. So my dad gets... Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyone else? I know, so Kat's mum gets one. She gets yeah, the Herald delivered. My dad gets the week. Which is different, but oh. yeah, that's good. I actually, but in response to that, I get it delivered to my phone every morning on the email. So. Well, so I, <laughs> I do get one physical magazine, Courier, mm. um, which is like a monthly kind of businessy type magazine. Courier is great. So I still, there is a need for, well, I'm not fully getting like, there's no need for print media, but <laughs> there's no need for newspapers, is it? Is there a need for newspapers, Jack? No. Okay, there we go. Um, well, oh fuck! We're, we're going to get absolutely cancelled with journalists here, maybe. I don't know. Our own marketeers. Yeah. Um, but milk. I during lockdown, I had a milk subscription. McQueen Dairies. 
And I kept on forgetting to cancel it, and Aaron yeah, was not again. happy. Because it was like orange juice, eggs, milk I was getting. So every, and then we went away on holiday and came back, so it was all rotting at the front door. So that stuff <laughs> exploded. I know, but like, yeah. I, like I'm going to remember to do that. Uh, so another subscription, and this... I've kind of warmed to it, but when it first came out, I was like, oh, are these people the laziest people in the world? Was the like Hello Fresh Gusto type subscriptions where it's like, well. here is your fully prepped meal, which you still then need to do quite a lot of prep. Yeah. And although you still need to cook it. Yeah. Yeah. I've and had it both, costs I've had both of those. I propose my mind. Like, can you imagine your grandparents or your mum and dad subscribing to a meal delivery service? No. So why do our generation are like, that's a good idea? I don't think it was a thing, well, when they were our age. But it's a thing now, and none of them... Does Robin, yeah. does Robin have to go with his newspaper subscription? Gusto. Does he have a gusto? No, of course not. No, I agree. Um, I've, I've really grown on them, because I do think it exposes people to food they maybe wouldn't cook themselves. Hmm. You know, they do get... They get the right amount of ingredients usually as well, so it reduces wastage. I just think it's yeah. a bit mind-blowing to me. Do you be. know, like, our big thing was speed. So... Like that, you can make them all very quickly because you literally just chuck everything in. There's no way out. But it was an incentive when it arrived. We we're like, right, we actually have to cook tonight, <laughs> and then it like mitigates the temptation of delivery. Yeah. But then there was a time when we got lazy one week and we ended up with like three meals we hadn't eaten. Just take like, them. Oh, I'll have them. <laughs> no, no, like chicken. Ah, oh. chicken and steak. There is a yeah. yeah. There is a vegan version of that. I think died for nothing. Grubby, maybe. Yeah, they did die for nothing. Uh, we had it. We ate, it. Um, ate the chicken. Just left all the sauces. <laughs> Raw. It's amazing that yeah. That's just another subscription. Some people must have hundreds, hundreds of pounds of subscriptions. Yeah. Do you know a good one that people still use? Neither of us have one. You probably don't have one either. A gym <laughs> subscription. Oh, <laughs> just subscribing. So the to one exercise. next to the roast just closed down. Is it that place is gym? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a subscribing to exercise is it's where I draw the line, really. I'm, I'm not subscribing Exercising in general for me. Yeah. Anyway, let's get back on the coffee subscription. So, long story short. It's probably a conclusion of this, right? It is a conclusion. <laughs> the world is full of subscriptions. Why should you subscribe to a coffee subscription? And it doesn't have to be Cairngorm's one. But, yeah, why should you have a coffee subscription? Because I think there's nothing worse than running out of coffee, is there? Like, it happens to even us. Like, I, when I run out of coffee... Uh, Do you know what is worse than running out of coffee is running out of toilet paper? Yeah, for sure. G- genuinely running out of toilet for paper. For sure. You literally walk in the toilet and you're like... Yeah, that's bad. What am I going to do? Go to the roastery. Uh, sorry, keep going. So running out of coffee is bad. Also, yeah. you'd go to the roastery if you run out of coffee as well, but... I know, but I always forget to take it home. Not everyone has a roastery. Shouldn't really be getting high in my own supply. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Um, I think that's a very, very good point. I think running out of coffee is awful when it happens. And I, like, so there's there's a guy who was emailing me this week to ask if he could um, skip this month uh, because he'd been in hostel, and he said, um, "I juggle between you and." Other another local coffee subscription, which I'm like, it's quite interesting. That's people don't necessarily only have one. Some people have multiple, which yeah. is pretty nuts. But I don't like. I just think people like convenience, don't they? I think it makes complete sense. I think uh, you you want to sometimes be put outside your comfort zone. You're talking about trying food that maybe you wouldn't normally pick. Hundred percent. I think it's quite good. Where like coffee is a. Uh, a probably a thing where I can imagine you falling into habits and yeah. like your own niche for what you think you like a lot. A classic example would be like people thinking they just love natural Brazils because they're chocolatey and nutty. Yeah, and like we hear that hundreds of times a month, yeah. and I think um, that's what people are used to. But if they were thrown into a position where they had this Burundi wash, for example, they'd be like, "Oh, that's actually really sweet." really pleasant. It's not what I thought it would be, which is mm. really wacky. It's actually just really delicious. Yeah. So I guess there's that element as well, just almost, you know, uh, encouraging yourself to try stuff. And yeah. coffee is such a diverse and complex uh, product. You know, the array of, um, of fla- flavor and uh, variety is so huge that it's a pretty sad situation if you just try... Natural Brazils for the rest of your life. Yeah. 
I, I completely agree with that. I think that's a good way to summarise, I guess, the benefits of a subscription is to get you exposed to more stuff. Oh, he's got another one. <laughs> There's more. I was just thinking. Like, the other thing probably is that um, a lot of these subscriptions will add extra value over just going in and buying a box of coffee. Yeah. So that's something that we are trying to, to improve on. The, the very, very, very uh, first example of that is putting a little flyer into our boxes, which we should be doing. I don't know if we are. And love hearts as well sometimes. Sometimes chucking a love heart. You know, I think... Um, the sweets. You know, we personally should be putting in like a little taste of... Kyle's competition coffee to our subscribers. You know, that's yeah, the kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Well, that's, I think we're very clear. We want to make our subscription better. And yeah. part of that, we're all, you know, we're like, yeah, let's, it's, it's that entire UX experience as well of mm. making it really easy to cancel, making it really easy to change, making mm-hmm. it really easy to pause it. All that kind of stuff is part of being a good subscription. And you're talking about throwing in some of the nice stuff as well. Because at the end of the day, like we said earlier, there are most loyal customers. Yeah. Or disloyal. If you sign up once and then cancel it. But no more ranting. Anyway, thank you very much for listening again. Yeah, thank you. And if you are enjoying this, then quickly uh, jump on the the subscribe button. We're slowly, very slowly. So you're going to have to subscribe to the podcast as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. (sighs) There's another subscription. (laughs) Jump on the podcast subscription, please, because, you know, we're... We're wasting quite a lot of our precious time doing this, yeah. and we're basically we could do a whole podcast on this, but we're trying to get our subscriptions up to a level where hopefully at some point in the near future or the long, the distant future, we can monetize it. Yeah, because we are a business, um, and there's your transparency. We want money, no. but uh, hopefully that's the case. But we more than anything just like to make sure you know that we've got new videos coming out. Um, Why don't we have a fucking Patreon? Uh, anyway, uh, what I think Rob was saying there is it's Friday night. I don't know what time it is on Friday night. That's how sad we are, basically, yeah. is that this is our Friday night. Yeah. So, so if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, jump on YouTube, watch it in full HD. Come and see where we're doing this podcast from, because yeah. that is a mic drop in itself. Um, so look after yourselves. Oh, so and the mic, he picked up the mic. <laughs> anyway... Love y'all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.